Hello, this is Jason. I'm back with another walk and talk from Jason, which is now just a playlist on the Some More Jason channel. I did try to make it a uh, more Jason, but I guess someone else already has more Jason. I didn't look to see who, but some more Jason was available. <laughs> and I'm actually getting started at a good time, which is 6.02. And the temperature is 91 degrees. So we should get there in time to be able to see the sunset. And I brought my drone this time so we can get some beautiful drone footage. Although it's of the same place, get the same place every day. But this walk is so much more enjoyable than walking on the streets walking where there's like the sun's beating down on me I would much rather walk through the through the woods on a nice wide trail I call it a trail but it's basically just a huge sidewalk <laughs> uh, but I just like this path and it's because before I used to walk on the streets and then you have all the loud cars which I have to walk on the street for like half mile going this way out of my over five miles of walking so I just think it's better it's better and uh, I finished watching the two new Menendez things on Netflix, which one was the series called Monsters, and then they just had a documentary called the Menendez Brothers or something. That just came out today, I think. <clears throat> and I finished the show. The show was, was made by the same people that made the, uh, the Dahmer one. And that one was disturbing. And this one, like I think it's the first episode, shows the murder, and it's pretty graphic. They they uh, made it very realistic. <clears throat> and then they got went into graphic detail of what the the brothers said that their dad did to them, which was also very disturbing and you know detail it had a lot of stuff in it that you know back in the day this was the trial i think it was 90 i forget 93 or something i was not paying attention at the time i remember coming home every day and my mom would be watching the menendez trial on court tv so she was totally into it she watched the whole trial as it happened the whole first trial so the first trial ended in a hung jury all the women jurors believed them and the men jurors didn't uh, they couldn't agree on whether it was going to be manslaughter or first degree murder and <clears throat> so then the second trial they did get a, a bad deal. So the first trial seemed like it was handled fairly. <laughs> you know, the judge let all available evidence to be presented to the jury. And, you know, they got to present the case as they wanted it presented. But then after the mistrial, <sighs> um, the, well, the OJ thing happened while the first trial was going on. He got arrested while the first trial was going on. And then OJ's trial was on. 
and OJ's verdict came in not guilty and the same judge that was presiding over the Menendez case was the one that presided over OJ's case I think that's what they said <clears throat> so he was kind of a, a embarrassed of that outcome I guess and so when he handled the Menendez case for the second time, he didn't let a lot of evidence come in. He was like, wanted to make sure that there was a verdict. There was no hung trial. So he, he did a lot of uh, guiding, I would say. Like he didn't let the Menendez brother's cousin come in who gave testimony that one of the brothers had told her that the dad was molesting them like when he was eight years old because the prosecution made the case that you know no no sexual abuse even happened that it was all just fabricated by the defense attorney as a defense to like get them off but there was evidence you know all, more than just one case of evidence that's one was the cousin that he told when when he was eight years old and he had told friend you know he had they had told other people leading up to it so it wasn't it wasn't something that they just came up with as a a defense after the fact they were definitely molested i would say <clears throat> and there was that i guess there's evidence that showed that their dad was molested by their uncle so that's how all that sickness like trickles down <sighs> you know someone gets molested and then they end up molesting someone and even Lyle Menendez molested Eric Menendez after his dad had molested him. And they said they you do it just to kind of normalize it that you want to make, you know, he's doing this to me, so it's to normalize it, I'm going to do it to someone else. It's disturbing. So. I do believe that they were molested. It wasn't just something that the defense attorney came up with. <clears throat> Although she did get it, like, get them to open up and actually talk about it. So they didn't even want to mention it. <sighs> so, you know, they ended up, the judge withheld all of this evidence for the second trial. Second trial wasn't televised and the prosecution made the case that like they just made up this whole defense of being molested to try to get sympathy from the jury and that it all came from some book that he had. <clears throat> Basically saying it was all fabrication that they just did it for the money. <sighs> so that jury found them guilty and then they even appealed and they appealed because the all the evidence that they didn't allow into the case but the appeals court rejected it so they were kind of sol but now it's coming up that i guess they're just making the case that in today's age that it's more uh, known that boys do get molested. Because they had, oh, that was another thing that the judge, they wouldn't let them prevent, like, there was some law that's kind of like a battered women's defense type thing that, you know, abused women that kill their abuser get like linear sentences and the judge said that they couldn't even make that argument because they weren't 
they weren't women. <laughs> so it's only protects women that are abused, not men, <laughs> which is kind of ridiculous. It was, I don't think that the law was written just to protect women. Like it should be for everyone, whether you're abused as a man or a woman. <laughs> so, <clears throat> They did kind of get a, a bum second trial. And they've been in prison for 35 years, so most countries, like a life sentence just means like 20 years. Especially in places like, like Germany and Scandinavian countries. And they actually rehabil rehabilitate you where in America, if you go to jail for 35 years, you're like, you can't function outside of prison. You haven't learned anything. <laughs> you might have got muscular from lifting weights, and but I don't think anyone's actually, you know, becoming a better person in American prison systems. Where in like Finland and Norway and Germany and Denmark, places like that, when you get sent to prison, you actually come out a better person. They send you to programs to teach you skills, and they don't treat you like an animal. So, people usually come out of those prisons better, where they look at prisons as rehabilitating broken people. Whereas America looks at prisons as you're going there to be punished and, you know, they have no interest in making you a better person. You just go to prison and suffer, scum. <laughs> Where there's murderers that get out in like 15, 20 years in those other countries I mentioned, and they actually are able to function in society whereas the Menendez brothers I don't know that they'll come out better than they went in and how they would actually function in society but that's what they're trying to do they're trying to get a, a new trial and get released you know they've all they've admitted that they killed their parents why they killed them Uh, imperfect self-defense they called it uh, so I would say 35 years is a good punishment for what they did considering what their parents did to them well really what their dad did and their mom knew about and allowed to happen she's kind of the uh, you know silent accomplice <sighs> and then they the documentary thing just was interviewing them like in prison actually had them on telling about like things that were happening stuff what they were going through at the time so it was worth watching I hadn't really given the Menendez brothers a thought for the past 35 years. And they were kind of like spoiled brat kids, the way that they were uh, presented in the movie, <coughs> the series. And they went on this big spending spree because they got the uh, life insurance money, which is like $600,000. They basically spent it all in the seven months between when the murder happened and when they got arrested. <sighs> and they would have probably got away with it if Eric didn't tell his therapist about it. 
And then his therapist told his mistress, and then he broke up with his mistress. So then his mistress went and told the police. <sighs> Pretty crazy. Let's see if I can adjust this backpack. There we go. Get a little tighter on the shoulder. better keep it nice and snug all these uh, electric scooters maybe when I go Bangkok I can get a electric scooter or just like an electric powered bicycle, the one that like have boost assist. I don't know that I'd want to drive a actual motorcycle around Bangkok. The traffic's crazy. Whew. You thought I could make it one video without talking about Bangkok. Well, you're wrong. <laughs> it's always on the back of my mind. <clears throat> but it is so cheap to just hire a bike on Grab. Grab's like the most popular app over there. It's like Uber. They have Grab and Bolt where we have Uber and Lyft. <clears throat> and you could get a motorcycle to take you just about anywhere in the city for a dollar. Literally a dollar. If you want to go real far, it might be two dollars. Then you got the Sky Train, take you all up and down Superbit Road. And that costs less than a dollar. So you can get around the city very cheap. So there's really no reason to even buy a scooter, motorcycle. Bicycle though, where you don't have to have insurance and be cheap to charge it. That might be worth having just to get around close range locally. Although, I do want to uh, keep walking just for the exercise. <clears throat> and today is day one of my third week in a row of fasting. <clears throat> Before I was starting my fast on, uh, well, I was eating my last food on Tuesday, so Wednesday would be my first day of fasting, whereas now I've switched it up to Sunday is my last day of eating, and Monday will be my first day of fasting, and I'm going to fast till Friday, 4 p.m., <clears throat> and I'll see how many weeks in a row I could do this, where my, my diet will just be eating on the weekends. And I actually kept it kind of healthy. I didn't eat any pasta this past weekend. I ate the Vietnamese food, that was pretty healthy. And I, what else did I, I cooked up a chicken breast. So that was good. I didn't really eat anything bad. I think I get a a burger so the bun the bun on the burger with some ketchup that was probably the worst thing that i ate all weekend i just made it made it at home i had one frozen wagyu beef burger left 
cooked it up in the air fryer toasted up some hamburger buns with some cheese it's all pretty good and i had a turkey turkey sandwich too with a mayo so i didn't do too bad that guy's pretty good shape for for an old man he looked to be about 45 50. maybe i'll be in that good of shape by the time i'm 50. it's got to keep up the walks lose the fat i need to start adding in some weight training i'll probably uh buy a membership at that round rock center it's right down the road from me i can get a year's membership for like 75 bucks that's a special price that they give to people that work at my company there's probably other companies too that get the deal <clears throat> nice discount though <sighs> they have a swimming pool too i would like to get back to swimming some laps my favorite form of exercise <clears throat> thing is every time i would go there especially since I like to go like after work around this time, six o'clock, that's like the busiest time. So half the time I would go, there'd be someone in the pool already swimming laps for a half hour and they only have two lanes. So if there's two people that want to swim, you're out of luck. They have room to make it like four or five lanes, but they only put up two lanes and then the other side they do like water aerobics and stuff like that which i'm not interested in doing water aerobics with a bunch of fat ladies <laughs> uh, and just keeping up these walks this is free even though 75 dollars a year is really cheap on a gym membership this is free and it is producing results. When I looked back, I just happened to see that I streamed on this channel back when it was Wicked Vlogs two years ago, taking a walk. It was, it was called like Night Walker or something. Horrible quality video. Don't watch it. But you could watch the beginning just to see how fat I was. Because I was probably 300. 50, 340 pounds in that video. I think that was around the time that I was just starting. So um, I definitely see a lot of progress compared to that. It's my face. My face was so fat. I wasn't dyeing my, my beard at that time. So I look much older. <laughs> uh, so adding in that hair dye shampoo every other week keeps keeps the youth keeps the youth in my face <clears throat> but i'm too what did i weigh in this morning 272 this morning <clears throat> and i got down to 269 before i ate all that Vietnamese food we'll see if it keeps going down <clears throat> should it's definitely not going to go up when I'm not eating all week only one direction for my weight to go <clears throat> and that 269 is you know I'm, I went back to on the I got around down to that during my first fast but then when I 
broke the fast in eight for a few days. We went up to 279. And then second fast and went down to like 269 area again, 268 maybe. And then I only went back up to 272. So it's, I'm getting lower, lower highs and lower lows. So it's still trending down, which is what I want. And I'm going to try to walk every single day. <clears throat> I think I could do it now. As long as I don't get huge blisters. Which I did have a huge blister on my right foot. But I've been putting moleskin over it. That definitely helps. My left foot seems to do fine. I've got a different, uh, I put weight on different parts of my foot from the left to the right, which is kind of weird. If you look at the bottom of my shoes, I have a different wear pattern on different parts of the shoe. <clears throat> I seem to put more weight on my heel on my left foot. On my right foot, it's almost all in the, in the ball of my foot, like the middle, not really the ball, like the middle of the my forefoot right in the middle where my left foot seems to distribute the pressure more evenly across my foot <clears throat> I don't know how you would change that so it's definitely preferable because I don't end up getting blisters on my left foot because the pressure is more distributed on my right foot it's more concentrated right there in that forefoot i get blisters there and on my big toe <clears throat> i don't know what causes that kind of weird kind of weird <clears throat> we'll see how long i keep this up it's already a third week of fasting, so I'm not eating more than I'm eating every week. And I, this is a lot easier for me than to do like alternate day fasting or intermittent fasting where you're only eating like once a day. Like I'd rather have three days, two and a half days of eating all I want and then just fast all week. That's it's, it's still like intermittent fasting. It's just more concentrated. <laughs> just being able to have two normal days rather than every day being abnormal and only eating once. I prefer it. We'll see how the how it pans out over time, how long I keep it up. Just drinking tea. Speaking of tea, let's tap into oh spilling it. Mm. Mm. Oh, yeah. That's good. All right. Yeah. So right before my first fast and then that first day two after that first fast i ate big like a pound of spaghetti with some tomato sauce that i made myself and it's only one can of tomato sauce like whatever it is eight 12 ounces not a lot 
but just if I eat spaghetti twice in one week, I get canker sores. So it's like the cruelest punishment. <laughs> I love spaghetti and tomato sauce. But if I eat it twice in one week, I get canker sores. So I didn't, I haven't ate it since then. So it's been two weeks. I'm still battling some canker sores. <sighs> and I've, I've done all the home remedies they talk about. I swish with like a hydrogen peroxide and then use like milk of magnesia to try to like neutralize it because they say it's like the acidity that's what causes it <clears throat> i wish i knew a way to prevent ever getting them i changed up my toothpaste they say there's like you know the regular colgate and crest toothpastes have kind of harsher chemicals in them that could cause canker sores. So I switched up to like the natural like xylitol toothpaste. That hasn't ha helped. <laughs> Everything I've tried hasn't worked because I've got two canker sores right inside my lip as we speak. The only thing that would help is not eating spaghetti, which I have done for like multiple months and I didn't get canker sores. <clears throat> and it's also, also I have to not drink citrus. Like I have to avoid, uh, <clears throat> I did eat limes in my, <sighs> my soup last night. That probably didn't help, but I have to avoid like orange juice, drinking lemonade, all the, uh, the citruses I have to avoid. Which I loved them. I love drinking orange juice. It's delicious. Although orange juice is just a bunch of sugar. It's got more sugar in it than soda. So it's probably not a bad thing that I'm not drinking a lot of fruit juices. And if you're going to eat fruits, use it more as a snack. I mean, it'd be a better snack than a Snickers. But eat the whole fruit. If you drink like eight ounce glass of orange juice, that's probably like two or three oranges worth of citrus and sugar. Where it's kind of hard to eat two or three whole oranges without getting sick of the oranges. And just all the extra fiber that's in there it helps not be such a shock of blood sugar to your system. At 2.03 miles, only got about half a mile to go. So let me know what you think about the uh, whole Melin Menendez case. If you think they should be let out. Or if you think they should just rot in prison. I kind of think 35 years is enough. Considering what their dad did to him. That's a long time. That's a lifetime. Definitely took the uh, best years of their life away. They've got to be, I don't even know how old they are. Got to be nearing 60. I would guess. <sighs> See what happens. I have a feeling they might get out for the next five years. I 
what else is going on. Work is going good. Still glad that I'm able to work from home. I do wish they would let me work from wherever I wanted. Well, they, they do let me do that within the United States. Last year I worked from Ohio for six weeks. And this year I might do it just one week. I don't want to spend six weeks in Ohio again. That's way, way too much Ohio time. <laughs> I think one week's enough. Two weeks is plenty. Two weeks is pushing it already. Too much, too much Ohio time. And it's not like it used to be when I lived there 20 years ago. Even more than that, 27 years ago. <laughs> it doesn't even feel like home anymore. Austin definitely feels more like home. Even though I, I know a lot of people there, they're all busy with their families and kids, taking their kids to ball games and all that stuff. Not like the days when I used to go to all the house parties and everyone would be hanging out, playing cards or whatever we did back then. Used to be a lot of like, have a big bonfire and everyone would come drink beers and hang out at the bonfire. None of that anymore. It's probably still happening, but it's people that are 27 years younger than me doing what I used to do back when I was their age. Not many people doing that that are my age. Uh, that is one of the appealing things of going to uh, over to Asia or just getting out of the country and being an expat, like joining an expat community. It's all the people that are kind of in the, you know, wanting, wanting to make friends where it's hard to make friends when you're 46 years old. I guess they do have like Facebook groups you can join for like a specific hobby but I don't even really have any hobbies these days I'm not into gaming even though there's probably not gaming meetup groups on Facebook that's not just virtual inside a game whereas you go to Bangkok and you join up like an expat group and they all have like weekly meetups and you could go meet people and make new friends, end up exploring, doing activities, so many activities you could do together. <laughs> uh, but that's what I see, at least on the videos I've been watching. people actually have more of a social life when they go leave their home country and go overseas because there's everyone's just kind of looking to meet up I'm not sure if I'd actually meet people that I would be able to hang out and be friends with or You know, I have no idea. <laughs> but even if I am just forever alone over there, at least it's uh, exploring new areas and just have new experiences, new places to discover.
Almost there. So, my failed experiment of all the new channels that I created didn't quite work out the way that I had expected it. So, they're all getting deleted. At least I discovered that it wasn't going to work within a month, so I didn't end up wasting too much time on it. And I've already got the enough subscribers on this channel to be monetized one day. I just have to get like 3,000 in watch hours. So 3,000 people watched one of these one hour long walk and talks. I could be partnered tomorrow. <laughs> It'll more likely be 50 people have to watch 60 of these walk and talks. Till I get partnered. <clears throat> but at least it's uh, attainable. It's a lot easier to just get watch hours on video from a low number of people watching a lot of videos than it is to get like 1,000 unique visitors to subscribe to a channel that's just walk and talk videos. That's, that's what I thought would be the impossibility. It wasn't going to happen. All right, this is the final bridge. Then we get to the park and see where the sun's at. It's already behind the trees. What time is it? 6.44, which was about the time that I left yesterday. So I should be able to get out of the forest before it's dark. Walking through that forest when it's dark is kind of creepy. And there's like no one there. I'll pass like maybe one or two people all the way from here to back on the other side where the road is. Not many people. Made it in pretty good time. I'm at 44 minutes, 33 seconds. So it should be about 45 minutes. By the time I get over to my bench, picnic table. And I'll put the drone up. And I'm not gonna make videos walking back that's going to be my own time I'm, I'm sharing my time with you your time will be on my walk here my time will be on my walk back that's when i like listen to podcasts audiobooks or just listen to music and look at that the tree the sun is right at the tip tip of the tree Right at the tip of the tree. <sighs> you make sure you're actually seeing it. This thing kind of likes to point its own direction. Actually, I'm gonna just point you guys at the sunset over there until I get the drone up. I'll turn this one off. So I didn't bring a stand for it. Beautiful sunset.
Beautiful. You could look at me again. Svete. Very, very svete. And I got the new Pixel Buds Pro 2. And I said this was the Pixel Watch 2. It's the Pixel Watch 3. Just so you didn't think I was rocking last year's technology thinking it was new. I would hate for you to think that of me. <laughs> that I would buy last year's technology. Never happen. It would never happen. Let's get our little droney up. Uh, uh, uh. I love this little guy. Bust the sticks out. And take off. Take off. And I'm going to do a clap. That's how I synchronize the video. Look at that. We're gonna have to go up too high to see the sunset now. Pretty cool. No GPS. Home point updated. Oh, glorious. It's a little hazy, it looks like. I guess there's little clouds on the horizon. Let's go up as high as we can go, see if it changes. Not really. Max altitude. Max altitude reached. 120 meters, which is about 400 feet. Uh -uh. And that gives you a hundred feet of separation between what the lowest private plane should be flying at. You're not supposed to fly below 500 feet in, a, in an airplane. And yeah, not, not the clearest view of the sunset today. You can barely see the drone when you look up. Can't really hear it either. <sighs> nice sunset. The haze does kind of make it look different. Cloudy fogginess. Not bad. 
Not bad. Let's have a look around the horizon. That's not too much to look at around here. A lot of trees. Trees and residential developments. And back to our sunset. I think that's all I got for today. Have it come back here and land. We can get our own uh, artificial sunset as it comes down. And I think it's landing out in the middle of the field here. We'll cancel the landing. You come back over here to me. There I am. Yeah, I'll have it land on the sidewalk. Turn around, you look at me. You look at me when you're landing. <laughs> get, a, get a nice landing. butt shot. <laughs> All right. Well, that's gonna do it. So, thanks for watching. Thanks for hanging out with me. Be sure to uh, like, comment, and subscribe. And tune in next time for another walk and talk i'm gonna to try to be walking every day i'm not sure if i'll be able to walk and talk every day but i'll try but don't be upset if i talk about bitcoin and bangkok almost every day because that's all my brain wants to think about <laughs> all right well talk to you guys later take it easy